In section one, I'm going to be talking about machining. In general, the machining processes include milling, lathe, turning, reaming, broaching, drilling, threading, counterboring, knurling, and surface finishing. Whenever possible, parts should be designed so that standard tooling can be utilized. The milling operation, a part designed to be milled should have no excessively thin or weak sections which could break during the operation. The part should also be easy to jig and machine without damage. Some surfaces which can be milled include recesses, slots, keyways, and flats. Spot facing of raised surfaces or bosses are often used to avoid costly milling operations. Whenever possible, the design should utilize standing milling cutters as when milling slots for key seats. There are times when the lathe can replace the milling machine to accomplish a given task, as shown below. Numerous operations are performed on a lathe, such as turning, boring, drilling, threading, and tapping. Some products made on a lathe are shafts, collars, bushings, sleeves, gear blanks, etc. Not only is this process economical, but it produces parts of high dimensional accuracy and surface finish. The designer should choose dimensions and materials from standard sock sizes whenever possible. When using a conventional lathe turning operation, cutoffs and burrs are always present as illustrated below. In these cutoffs and burrs are to be minimized. The designer should indicate where they, these are to be removed. The removal process could include grinding, filing, or tumbling. Another method used for keeping cutoffs and burrs to a minimum is by using a cutoff tool ground at a slight angle and relieved in the center as shown in the following illustrations. I show the application of the preferred cutoff tool and it is shown below. Screw machine parts. Among the most common types of fabricated parts are those made by screw machines. These machines are used where turning, threading, forming, facing, or drilling are repeated on large quantities of parts. The types of products produced on screw machines include bushings, bearings, bearing parts, pins, nuts, bolts, studs, pinion shafts, instrument parts, etc. In addition, screw machining is to be used to put the finishing touches on parts which have been semi-completed by some other process. Die castings and tubing are often used to save material costs and machining time. In addition, tolerances should not be specified that are closer than needed, and a surface finish that is finer than necessary should be avoided because it adds to the expense of a screw machine part. As indicated previously, a drawing should specify whether or not the cutoff burrs are to be removed. A considerable saving can be realized if burrs do not have to be removed. Should deburring be necessary, this operation should be done by tumbling or some similar method if possible. Design considerations. When designing parts to be produced by screw machines, a few design points must be kept in mind. The example below shows the correct method of indicating specifications for radii, corners, chamfers, and countersinks.
broaching. Broaching is the process of removing metal by drawing a rod-shaped multiple tool cutter over and through the material being worked. Broaching is used for cutting shapes such as internal gears, keyways, and splined or slotted holes. Also, broaching is superior to rimming when finishing round holes because in a single stroke all excess material can be removed. Some typical broaching tools are shown below. Although costly, broaching tools can be resharpened after becoming dull. This, however, has the disadvantage of being time consuming. Materials which can be successfully broached include steels, cast iron, bronze, brass, magnesium, and aluminum. Surface broaching is often substituted for milling when large quantities of a part are to be produced to close tolerances and fine finish. Grinding. Grinding is done by means of a bonded abrasive wheel rotating at high speed. Practically any type of material can be successfully ground. Although some soft material such as aluminum and brass may load the grinding wheel. Rough machining usually preceding, precedes grinding, leaving an excess of material for grinding will reduce production efficiency. As shown below, parts can be finished to a very precise dimensions by grinding. As shown above, the diameters ABC must be concentric to 0 0.002 or 2 thousandths TIR, total indicator reading, when mounted on centers or equivalent. Two, harden and grind. Parts that are to be ground must be firmly secured to avoid distortion. Also, slots, holes, and flats in the surface of parts should be avoided. Flat and circular surfaces can be ground on standard machines. Irregular shapes usually require grinding by hand or, where accuracy is important, by use of a special setup. Drilling, although simple, the drilling operation cannot be controlled with any high degree of accuracy. The rotation of the tool or work causes lines on the inside wall of the hole. This hole may not be perfectly round but elliptical because of a bend in the drill or because the angle of the drill at its point may be slightly off. The design of holes should not require the use of extra long drills, nor be located so as to hinder the accessibility of the tool. When a, tool, when a drill passes through solid metal, a cleaner, straighter hole results. It is not advisable to drill through a discontinuity of metals. And I show an example of poor practice. Actually, you should design holes away from fillets and curved surfaces. Drilling through fillets is not desirable since the drill is more likely to break and damage the part. The designer should avoid locating holes on curved surfaces. Flat surfaces are preferred. In the case of laminated material, holes should be placed at right angles to the laminations. If this is not possible, only a cloth-based laminate should be used. Reaming. When holes have been previously punched or drilled, reaming is often used as a precise finishing operation, as in the case of holes to be used for mounting bearings or tapered holes for pins. Where the diameter of two or more holes are to be concentric, and are close together, multi-diameter reamers will provide excellent results. In order to prevent damage to a reamer because of the accumulation of chips in a hole, the hole should be designed deeper than necessary. 
through holes are always preferred. Alignment of holes. Alignment of three or more holes is difficult and should be kept to a minimum. When it is necessary, however, a jig and pilot pushing will be required as shown below. Counterboring and spot facing. These operations are used to provide flat surfaces on which to rest washers, bolt heads, spaces, bushing, etc. When counterbores are used to provide clearance for bolt heads, fractional dimensions with adequate clearance is acceptable. Threading and tapping. The formation of threads in a part can be achieved by means of taps, dies, milling cutters, grinding wheels, or rollers. Part design is usually dependent on the process used to form the thread. Standard hardware, such as bolts and screws, use threads which are rolled. Die-cut threads will accept all common threaded fasteners and are created either by hand or semi-automatic machines. Although mill threads are more difficult to make, they can have closer tolerances and will have a better surface finish than die-cut threads. And high-precision threads are usually ground. Surface finish or roughness. Surface finish is both a measurable dimension and a tolerance. Generally, the finer the finish, the higher the cost. Therefore, the designer should not specify a finish finer than is actually required. The value given to establish surface finish is an amount equal to the average deviation in micro inches, which is measured normal to the center line. A micro inch is one millionth of an inch. The micro inch finish is shown on drawings in terms of RMS, arithmetical means units. In the following example, a rating of 63 micro inches is shown. This value is understood to apply to all surfaces defined by that dimension. When a definite range of roughness is required, it is usually indicated with the maximum rating always appearing above the minimum rating. When the finished symbol is specified with as cast, as forged, as punched, etc., it is interpreted to mean that additional matching operations are not required and that the finish should be achieved by the process indicated. As previously stated, surface finish is both a measurable dimension and a tolerance, and the following table lists the approximate relationship between finish and tolerance. Also, it must be remembered that in order to achieve a particular finish, Careful consideration must be given to the method of production to ensure that the desired finish is possible with a particular process. This is the end of section one with de deals with the chapter on machining. Thank you for watching.